Aloha, guys, and welcome back to Degree Free. We are your hosts, Ryan and Hannah Maruyama. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today, we are going to be talking a little bit about ourselves. Yeah. Um, We've been getting a lot of questions about who we are and what we do. Um, Who the heck are you? Why are you doing this? Right. And so today, we are going to be just kind of talking a little bit about ourselves and giving a little bit of our background and um, why we care about why we care about this mm-hmm. why and we, how we started doing it how we started doing it why we care about degree free why we care why we care about helping people find good work mm-hmm. without having to go to college yeah um and then also helping people decide if college is right for them mm-hmm. and then if they don't if they already have a degree and maybe f- helping them figure out if going back to college is good for them as well or what what they should be doing in the next stage of their life if they're not satisfied with the current degree that they have yeah a lot of people a lot of people are wondering basically like what our what our backstory is and where we came from and um how we how we became entrepreneurs and also what it is that makes us that that drives us to talk about this basically and to try to be a voice for um that just advocates for people uh, who who have never felt like they really fit into the system or who are just kind of questioning it now or feel like they haven't gotten what they were supposed to get out of it. And we, you know, we're going to tell you. Well, I guess I'll go first. My name is Hannah Mariyama. I am married to uh, this man right here, Ryan, and we live in Honolulu, Hawaii, and we own a tattoo shop, actually a paramedical tattoo shop locally. I'm also an IT business analyst consultant, which is a job that I did get using some of our some of our methods while we were testing some of the things that we're going to tell you folks in this podcast. Um, and before before all of this, uh, I mean, my educational background is that I'm a college dropout. I went to college for about a year and some change, and in the middle of a midterm, once I was, I was in, I was, ta- I was in the middle of taking a midterm exam, and I just, I just couldn't stay there one more second. So I just, in true, in true melodramatic fashion. <laughs> just tore the tore the exam in half threw it in the trash and I left and I never I never went back and I I don't think that I ever will um mainly because I don't think that college uh was necessary for me to achieve the things that I have achieved in my life I don't think that it college was necessary um or affordable for me to help me in the goals I have been pursuing and I think that that's something that um, the more the more I reflected on that especially after I left the more I realized that I had not been told that that was an option I was not encouraged at all or equipped to um, go into the world and try to just work which is what a lot of people do the majority of the, of Americans in fact and I think um, also something I realized was that I had I had always been told that I had to go and there was no real reason. Uh, and that's something that the more I questioned it and the more I tested whether or not I needed a degree to do certain things that I had been told that I needed a degree to do. And the more I accomplished them, uh, the more skeptical and questioning I think I became of the system, um, of, of the American college system. And that is, I think that's, I would say that's kind of where Degree Free came from originally. I remember we talked about it though when we met. And I think that 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 it's been kind of something that you and I together as entrepreneurs, it's kind of been fostered in that as well, because people have come to us to ask us for advice to do different out of the box career and work things because they know that we have done out of the box work career things. And I think that that's how this whole thing started. Yeah. So I guess it's my turn to go. My name is Ryan Mariama. I'm a firefighter for the city and county of Honolulu. And um, as Hannah said before, I am a part owner of Yama Studios, which is a paramedical tattoo clinic here in Honolulu, Hawaii. For me, I actually did get a college degree. I got my degree in economics. And so a lot of people will probably think, and a lot of people do think that, I mean, I've, I've had multiple conversations where people call me hypocrite. So, all right. So that's... We get that out there. I don't know, think- though, but people, I think people, people say that. But the thing is, we we also speak to people who have gotten a college degree and then end up 
they're trying to get into a field that doesn't require one or it didn't work the first time and yeah. they want to get into something else and they need actual job training instead of a degree right. in order to get that job. So I'll take that. I'll take that. I'll, I'll, all right, I'm a hypocrite. And so, but that being said, a little bit about my background. I went to college because I felt like I needed to. And my family, for my family, it was never an option for me to not go to college. I would have been letting them down a lot by not going. And I don't think that my... It's not a sob story. I don't think that my experience is unique. I think that that happens to a lot of people. I know that that happens to a lot of people, to most of the people we talk to. You know, they're like, well, I can't let my family down. You know, my family expects me to go to college. It's like, all right, I, I get that. You know, I get that. So all throughout college, I bartended. I waited tables. I served tables. I worked in the restaurant industry. And I worked all throughout. I worked throughout high school, throughout college, even past that. Um, that was pretty much what I did. That was my career. Um, after college, I was looking to get out of that business. So then I ended up getting a desk job, um, do in consumer credit, underwriting, consumer credit loans, credit cards, things like that. After that, I didn't like that job. I ended up not like I ended up not liking that job, which is funny because that's the job that I was supposed to I was supposed to like. I was supposed to get that job with my degree, but I hated it. I was basically a monkey with a headset, as I like to say. Yeah. I there's a there's like credit underwriting guidelines that like here is this you th this person has to look like this person. If they don't fit that, then you deny them. If not, you should accept them. It's like all right, you know what I mean. Uh, literally, a computer program could do that. I don't know why I'm. I don't know why I have a job. Yeah. Right. And I didn't get paid a lot of money to do it. So I was only there for like a year. And then after the year, I quit. Why did you quit? I didn't feel like there's a future in it for me. I felt like I probably could have moved up, but I, but the pay was really, the pay was terrible. Do you think that that happens to a lot of college graduates, their first job? What? Where they get, they get to the first job and then they're extremely dissatisfied with the Yeah, I think that work. happens to a lot because you don't, because you don't know anything. You know what I mean? And then, and then, like I said, the, for me, the pay was horrendous. I, I was making, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure how much I was making at the time, but I was 35 something. No, I, as a bartender or as a, as a bartender at the time, I was probably making like $60,000 or something. I don't know. Something like that. Good money. Decent money. Decent money. Yeah. Not the, not the best lifestyle. That lifestyle is very, that lifestyle is, it's hard to be industry. That lifestyle is very unique. Um, cash is liquid. It almost doesn't exist. You go out a lot, mm -hmm. but if you can. You don't sleep. Yeah. And I was young, so I definitely partook in that lifestyle. Um, but I wanted to get out of it. But then the job that I was supposed to get with my college degree, the job that my career paid me like $31,000 a year. And I mean, that's my fault for accepting a job that paid me $31,000 a year. But in Hawaii, that's all, that's, that's the going rate for entry level at the time. That's going rate for entry level position. I think now it's still only like 33. And something. it's just like, well, how am I supposed to, you know what I mean? Like how am I supposed to make a living off of this? So I still, I ended up still working full time at the bank underwriting and then i three times a week three nights a week i bartended and i did that for the whole year that i worked there and i was just like this doesn't make any sense i'm making thirty one thousand when i can just go back full-time to bartending and make double mm -hmm. uh, and just have one job yeah and just have one job the economics just don't make sense and then i was i then i also started looking at like i started looking at like what if I was to move up in that company, but the, but the pay raises are like really, really minimal. Mm -hmm. It's like in order to double. How minimal? A uh, few, few grand. Few, yeah, a few grand. Like, oh, now you're at 35. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 way, the way to make money here, it's, it's everywhere now, is you, you have to be willing to leave. Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to leave the company. To go to a different company. To go to a different company. And then you 
get to gain some years and then get a bigger bigger title when you come back mm-hmm. um the days of you get a job when you're in your early 20s and then you work there for 40 years or 50 years and you get your gold watch or whatever mm-hmm. your gold bracelet whatever it is that those days are like those days are gone um do you think so specific to where we lived so specific to Hawaii do you think something that i've noticed about um a lot of the college graduates here specifically too is that they don't know how to negotiate yeah. i do think that that's specific to Hawaii and that people are not taught to negotiate when they get a job and they're so polite that they don't ask for what they want um, they don't ask for benefits they want they don't ask for schedules they want and they definitely don't ask for money that they want um, they just accept whatever the first offer is which you should never do at a, at a, at a job interview because that's the lowest <laughs> that's the lowest number that they're throwing at you yeah, yeah I think I think that's definitely that's definitely what happened to me. I took the I took the lowest offer. I didn't negotiate. I tried to. <laughs> so right out of college, I got this job and they this is a long story, but not tell it. It's good. So right out of college, I actually before I got this consumer credit underwriting job, I got another job. And the job before that, I was only there for a couple of weeks because I ended up getting the job as a consumer credit underwriter. But the job in between, probably had it there for like three weeks, um, they were paying me hourly. It came out to like $28,000 a year or something like that hourly. <coughs> this is when you had a degree? But at least, this yeah. Is, this is when you had a degree? When I had a degree. Yeah. Yeah. This This reflects... This reflects uh, the numbers of of a study called the Third Way Study, which shows that a lot of college graduates actually make twenty eight thousand or less yeah. after they graduate college. Yeah, it was something like that. I, I I'm sure I could do the I'm sure I could do the numbers, and but it's like something. So when I got called back from the consumer credit underwriting job, I was like, oh, perfect. And then I was like, okay, well, I got called back. I went to interview, and they they offered me the job. And now I'm in negotiations with them. I was like, okay, well, now I can swing for the fences. You know what I mean? Because I have a job. I already have a job that pays me 28000 And now I have a job, you know, that offered me thirty one. I'm like, well, for $30,000, what's the hassle? That's kind of a hassle for me to, like, move jobs. And then it's in a different location. It's much further away. It's like, you know. But you had the instinct to negotiate. Yeah. So, and then I went, so I went there. And then I met with the HR lady. And then I was like, oh, okay here's she's like okay here's what we're here's what we're gonna give you and i was like oh okay well here's what i want and i'm pretty sure that i said thirty seven thousand dollars and i don't i never forget she just laughed she was just like (laughs) like, all right (laughs) did she really yeah yeah that's actually such a that's a crazy flex (laughs) yeah yeah, yeah. she just laughed i mean maybe it wasn't as maniacal as i just made it out to be i don't know maybe it was maybe it wasn't as maniacal as it's a better story than it was yeah but but no she definitely laughed she was like all right for for those of you listening let's get down to business and that's a a fantastic negotiating tactic six thousand dollars over a year come on lady like you know what i mean break that down wait so this extra 500 bucks a month yeah yeah that's nothing yeah. that's chump change yeah and i was just like all right i don't want to get uh, but so anyway you, i don't know if you were told me that she she actually laughed yeah, when you said that number laughed. yeah wow yeah wow yeah and so I was like, i mean it's kind of badass on her part she just lives just... yeah i know <laughs> I was like, all right well i guess i'll take 31 <laughs> so yeah so then i ended up taking thirty-one thousand dollars as the offer and and no wonder why I hated it. They was paying me half of, of yeah. my bartending job. Yeah. And it's supposed to be my career. It's supposed to be my fulfillment. But then a lot of it too is, and this is what we've, this is what we run into talking to people that have already obtained a, a degree and are thinking and are not satisfied in their careers and are thinking about going back for another degree, mm-hmm. which I've also been in that boat. I have, I have thought, I have thought about that. And I get to that in a second. Um, but yeah, this is very typical is where people get a college degree where they think that's supposed to be work training and then they go and get the job that they've trained to do, even though uh, consumer credit underwriter and an economics degree, you do not need an economics degree 
to be a consumer credit underwriter. How do I know that? My supervisor did not have my supervisor did not have a college degree. My, the other person that was my counterpart that worked on the same products that I worked as, he did not have a college degree. I was I, like, I this, this, this makes lot. no sense. This it- makes no sense. But the but the but the job listing that I applied to said college degree required. But the two other people in this three person department didn't have college degrees. What is what kind of racket are you running over here? I mean, we we know what kind. Yeah. Of, but but. I've I found too that I've noticed this and this is like this is a controversial statement so get ready but you do not need a college degree I don't know who needs to hear this but you do not need a college degree to use Outlook, Microsoft Teams, Excel, PowerPoint. You do not need a college degree to answer the phone. You do not need a college degree to give presentations. You do not need a college degree to talk to a room full of people and engage them in training or engage them in sales. Uh, You don't need a college degree for most of the day-to-day things that you will do at a job, which is probably, I think, the biggest common sense argument for why you don't need a college degree to do any of those things. Yeah. You don't. And so, yeah, getting back to um, the my path i guess or my um getting back to my experience yeah i've i've been in that i've been there where i was thinking about so after that after i quit after i was bartending for a little while i wasn't satisfied i wanted to find a career but i didn't know what to do and so i was it was my plan to go back to school and get a degree in mechanical engineering. I thought about, you know, I was dating a girl at the time who's one of her family members worked at Disney and she was the manager of the Disney animatronics division. And I was like, wow, that sounds cool. I am going to be an engineer to work on like Buzz Lightyear. You know what I mean? And you go on the Buzz Lightyear ride and the Toy Story ride, and he's just like waving at you, like that's freaking sick, that's cool, you know. I was like, all right, maybe I'll maybe I'll go get a mechanical engineering degree. But I, I'm glad I didn't, you know, because I was just throwing darts at a dartboard, as I always say, and I didn't want to throw that sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollar dart. Right. You know, the crazy thing about that story is that the lady that I'm talking about who ran a team of engineers, she didn't have a college degree. I remember, I remember having this conversation with her and this was years ago, right? This was before you and I met. Yeah. And I remember having this discussion with her and she was like, yeah, you know, I manage a team of masters, master's degree people, like master's degrees, engineers. So I think she said she had a PhD work for her bachelor people bachelor's degrees and she didn't have a degree and she's managing all of these people related story that same girl that i was dating her dad ran a team of electrical engineers did he have a college degree no no he did not and sensing a theme he did not have a college degree and it's like what and I wish and, and I wish I had keyed in. I wish I had keyed in on the that's like rec- not recognizing like not recognizing the signal for the noise. You're a kid though. Yeah, it's like but it's like t- totally t- totally not recognizing what was what was actually valuable in that in that conversation in those conversations that I had with with her was just that like look, you can learn how to learn. You can manage people you can do good work, meaningful work, and get good, get paid good money to do it without college degrees. I was like, Phew. you know what I mean? And, and it's not until later, till years later, that I started to, to reflect back on, the, on those conversations that I had. And I was like, yeah, dude, you're like super successful and you don't have a college. This is all a long-winded way of saying that like my route to trying to help people navigate navigate these waters has been pretty I mean, it's pretty standard. I mean, 
I don't feel like I'm unique in any of the things that I'm talking about. I like, I know what these people are feeling because I've been there. I, I've done, I've been that person. You know, what I mean? like I was going to get a second degree. I got a first degree and I didn't know what to do. And then now, if you look at my life now, I'm a fireman. You don't need a degree for that. Nothing that you do requires a college degree. Nothing that I do requires a college degree. Or rather, nothing that you do, nothing that you do now, you wouldn't be stopped from doing anything that you do for money now if you didn't have a college degree. Yeah, absolutely. That's a... That's a more that's a more well rounded way of saying it yeah, too. I agree. Like not, there's nothing you're doing now that that you wouldn't have been able to do if you had a college degree. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing. Or if that you wouldn't have been able to do if you didn't have a college degree. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I I have a fireman and I run businesses. Yep. Like you don't need a college degree for any of that. For for any of that. And as demonstrated by the fact that I run it with you yeah. and I now also work on a similar team of people and I have zero degrees. Yeah. And your, and your, and your, 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 your life experience is exactly the opposite. Yeah. Your life experience is exactly the opposite where, well, we've arrived at the same place. Mm -hmm. You're working in a job that says college degree required and you don't have one. Right. And I'm working in a job that when I have a degree and I'm working in a job that says you only need a high school diploma. Right. And a driver's license. And a driver well, and a driver's license. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. That is very true. Yeah. I never really thought about it like that, but yeah, yeah. that's true. We're, ex and I think, I think it's good too, because that's, that's another part of the reason that, uh, Ryan and I are really excited to talk about this too, is because we fall into several of the camps of people we tend to think there's three types of people who will really benefit from this uh from this podcast it's going to be people who are questioning whether or not college is a good choice for them and go kind of going i don't know if i want to do that i don't know if that seems like a really good idea i don't know if it seems financially sound i don't know if it seems time wise um and then also people who have already th it, it really is amazing though the reflex just as an offshoot but it really is amazing the reflex of people who spent all that money and all that time to go get a degree and when it doesn't work they turn around and they do it again it's like dude you didn't get burned enough the first time like it didn't hurt enough the first time those loans don't stress you out enough now when you're when you have a degree and well, you're and, and then your first reflex is to go spend more money when you literally can't make money with the first one you have it's crazy well that just goes into it's marketing it's marketing. It's the success. college is marketing. It's success by the colleges and by the kind of society, but not really. Right. In in a in a lip service way. Society gives lip service to if you have multiple degrees, you're successful. But business and work and actual money and actual paid labor gives service to if you can do the job, you're gonna make the money. But yeah, basically the the three types of people that we think are going to listen to this are going to be parents of people who are debating sending their kids to college, uh, 17 and 18 year old kids who are trying to kind of on the fence, wondering if it's a good idea for them. People like me who are degree free adults and are now kind of wanting to get into uh, career jobs, but they are not really sure how to break into the market because they're not really sure how to approach it because they've lived doing alternative types of work, but they want to get into a traditional job, but they're just not really sure how to get into it or what they need. And then there's the people who I really feel for, which is people who, um, people who are like you, who got a degree, but didn't end up in a job that pays them well and that they like. And now they're just having this crisis of identity and their reflex is to run back and, and, and go into more debt. And it's not their, I mean, it, it's been marketed to them as the solution, but it's the problem. And, and that's, it's hard. And, and I know, so one of the things that the reason why people go back and I, I was one of these people is that going back to college to get another degree isn't the creative solution. It's, mm -hmm. it's as a, it's, as I talk about it's as I talk about, as it's, it's as I've said before, going to college is just walking the path that's put in front of you. 
and going back to college is just going back to going back to the beginning and then going down you know going down this other path instead mm. but instead you have to stop instead the alternative is hard it's difficult the alternative is hard the alternative is you have to stop evaluate where you're going in life evaluate where you are evaluate your skills evaluate what you can do evaluate what you evaluate what you want to do and then you have to somehow make all of that happen you have to synthesize all of that and then you have to go and make it happen and that's difficult then you have to trudge your own trail you have to take that machete out and start cutting down the brush and that's difficult that's hard work i think a lot of it i think i i think though a lot of it is actually i wish it was more of that i wish it was more fear of hard work i think a lot of it though is just societal it's societal shame it's that people there's something um people don't want to when someone when someone says oh what are you doing they don't want to say oh i'm working as a whatever insert low paying job or insert job that people look down on or insert job that it just isn't flashy that people look down on because it's not flashy they'd rather say it's it's more socially acceptable to say i'm going into more debt than i already have to get a job in the hopes that i'll get a job instead of just saying i got a job I think people too realize that when I say this, they'll realize that they've seen this in action before, but there's a lot more shame, societal shame associated with uh, someone saying, or rather society is is more inclined to praise people who are who just say, oh, I'm going back to school than they would somebody who says, oh, well, I'm an assistant manager at McDonald's, even though the assistant manager at McDonald's is making money. And this person is spending money they don't have to go further into debt in the hopes that they'll get a job that probably isn't going to is only going to pay them three grand more because they now went into extra debt. So it's, it's interesting. It's weird. But I do think that that has something to do with it because there's more shame in accepting a not glamorous job than there is in spending money you don't have, which is very American. I yeah, yeah. I think that I think that I think that that does have a part to play in it as well. I think they. I think they're both accurate. Mm. I think I don't. I don't. I don't think it's all societal shame. You know. I think the fact that is like going back to school is the uncreative solution, and not going to school and still trying to figure out how to get your dream job and do it is what do what fulfills you. And, Scary. And that is the creative solution. And creativity is hard. Creativity is hard. Yeah. And then pile that on with the indoctrination of that you should go back to college and that you should do this and where that's your first that's the knee-jerk reaction is that you should go back and then bucking up against that as well as realizing that shoot i don't have any skills then realizing that like i don't know what to do that's all difficult mm -hmm. and so i think all of that as 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 well as societal shame as you're as you're calling it um it also it, could be just like a it, it's it's also it's also just associated right it's the way the colleges have branded themselves which is this is where you get things that get you jobs it's like saying it's like asking somebody like go you know it's like asking somebody go go buy me a chicken where are they gonna go the store because the store says we have chickens right it's the same way where uh, people are like where can i like how can i get a job and the college is like oh come to us we can get you a job they never say it blatantly but they imply it enough that that's where people when they can't get a job they're like i guess i gotta go get more college i guess i gotta go get more college so then i guess to bring it back around to the why we're doing this and and how we're you know the, just the why of why we're doing this we have we've had a lot of people in our lives come to us and ask us for career advice and life advice business advice and a lot this is a lot of what they say they say all these things and they've gone through all of all of these things one of the things that's interesting that you were talking about about the societal shame is that when we when we talk to people when we speak to people and then they're like, everybody asks, 
a very common question is like, oh, do you, like, did you go? Did you go to school? Like, did you? Oh, do you have a degree? And then, a lot of people that don't have degrees, it's shameful. It's like a shaming. It's uh, they're not proud to tell them to like, oh, no, I, I don't. I didn't. I ended up not. But then, I could be asking this of like a really successful person, and this has happened. And it where, makes them shrink. Yeah, and it, ma- and it makes them feel small. And I think part of what we want to do here is that we also want to empower people that like take that back. Yeah, you like, oh yeah, I have a degree in economics, so I'm, you know what I mean? Like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, you're a fireman, be, be quiet. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like instead of being instead of shrinking, be like, oh no, I'm degree free. Like, no, I, I don't, I don't have a degree, and I chose not to get one. Mm-hmm. And here's why. Turning it back into taking control back over that. Yeah, um, of that narrative. Yeah, don't let people label you as somebody as somebody who doesn't have something because what you have instead is experience. And I guess it's hard to explain that you don't have debt from it too, but you don't have to do that. You can just say I chose I didn't go. Yeah. No, I didn't have to do that. And and just kind of taking as somebody who is degree free um, as somebody who is probably one of the, like, I'm proud of it. I'm not ashamed of it anymore. But even with that, it's still, sometimes I still feel it because it's, it's ingrained in me. It's K through 12. Yeah. It's everything my parents told me, same thing they told you. And so it's hard. You have to like actively take back, take back that and not, and not shrink away from that. And instead be, instead I did this. So throughout the, throughout the time that Ryan and I have been developing this concept and trying to figure out how we're going to talk about it and how we're going to how we're going to help people with it we've talked to a lot of people about it uh some people that came to us to talk about it and some people who we just encountered either in our business or in life and an interesting thing that we noticed is that when we talk to people who have self-educated or have just found jobs and worked their way up or have alternative methods of education or own businesses and they say oh well what's that about you know what is that and they say oh it's it's basically it's basically just we're educating people about the options they have outside of college and and showing them that they can be successful and they can get good jobs and make good money without it because a lot of people are like that and you know we're calling it degree free because technically those people are degree free and then it's almost like they straighten up they straighten up they take a more space and they go oh that's me. You know, they feel, they realize that what they did and what they have done is amazing. It's amazing that they have gone out and they have just worked. They have gone countercultural and they have actually just worked. They have just sat, they've just head down, done work and moved up. And, and for them to realize that there's, there's pride in that. There's pride in having done that. And there's definitely nothing shameful in having done that for sure. And, and that's, that's really cool. It's, yeah. it's really cool to see it. You've seen, you, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think just being able to, being able to provide a little bit more of a vocabulary or just opening up the conversation to having people be okay with it, with the fact that you don't need a degree, with the fact that they don't have degrees. All of this, you know, it's it's really rewarding for us. You know, we we love to do it. And um and I think one of the criticisms that we get is like, yeah, but you wouldn't tell your kids to do this. We're like, okay. <laughs> well, we don't have kids yet, you know, hopefully soon, but we don't have kid we don't have kids yet. That being said, we have already told our sisters, your sister and my sister, we've already told them. We've told them this. No, we, we're we we're putting our money where, where our mouth is. We've sat down, my sister, and we told her, look. You don't have to do this. You do not have to go to college. You're not you, obligated to do, you're, to you're do so. You're not obligated to go to college. That was personalized advice. Or I mean, not not personalized. So, and that was something that we came up with because she didn't know what she wanted to do. We asked her, we sat her down and we said, hey, look, what are you thinking about doing? She didn't know. She had she didn't no know. idea. Which is fine because she was 17. Perfectly fine. It was perfectly fine. And I was just like, okay, 
that's okay. You don't have to know. You're a kid. That being said, don't go into five figures of debt. It's actually kind of local, right? Don't if you don't know, don't go. Yeah, don't don't go into five figures of debt in order to figure it out. Why don't you just get a job? Get a job. And think about it. Start get a job. Start working. Figure out what you want to do. Think okay, you think you might want to be a massage therapist. Well, how about you go and go to a massage therapy school? Or you go volunteer or go get a job at a massage therapist's office. Something. Mm-hmm. Right? Instead of going to college. We failed we failed in that regard. Um she ended up going. She didn't finish though, so we're proud of her there. Yeah, that was that was funny. She, dropped, she came back. She from dropped college. out she dropped out of two years. She so didn't we, tell we, we couldn't say we couldn't save her on the on the student loans for the first two years, but we saved her on the back end. Yeah. Well she saved herself. She we didn't, didn't we didn't No, save she her. chose to. Yeah, we didn't save but her. But was what was funny about that story is that when she came back, uh she didn't want to tell the family. But when she told us, we we were like, Good for you. Yeah. We're super proud of you. That's super proud. Also, because I was you, very proud. If you're listening to this and you drop out because you realize it's it, no, it does not suit your future goals, that is that I think is harder than not going. Yeah. That is near impossible, and that is amazing. Good I remember. I, I remember. I sent her a text. I remember. I told her that I was proud of her, and like I understand that it takes a lot of courage to drop out. Yep. Especially in especially in my family, I understand how my family is. It takes a lot of courage to drop out mm-hmm. and say, "I'm not going to do this anymore." And you know what? For her, she didn't know what she wanted to do still, and that's even more, mm-hmm. even more so that took courage because she sat there and she's like, "I don't know what I want to do." She looked at the unknown and she was like, "I choose that." She's like, "I don't know what I want to do, but I'm still going to drop out because I don't want to keep paying this money." Perfect. Good for you. Mm-hmm. And then, and then, you know, we told your sister, my sister. So we basically did a case study, uh, is what we is kind of feels like is because we took two people, uh, two, two girls of the exact same age and told them the same thing at the same time. Uh, my sister has always been a little, very mechanically inclined. And so she ended up finding a paid welding training and she got scuba certified and she is within the next two years going to be an underwater welder one way or another. So, um, for her, it seems like it's going very well, mostly because her finances went in the opposite direction. She's just working. It doesn't matter if she doesn't want to be a welder later, but the thing is the likelihood of her being able to pivot into some, even an office job for some sort of steel or welding company is high because she has experience working in that field. Um, you know, if you, if you have experience working in a field you might want to go into, it's going to be much easier for you to get into other jobs in the in those fields too. Yeah, yeah. And then, like we say, like we tell that, like we tell everybody. And then, if for whatever reason she ha- figures out that for some reason she absolutely needs a college degree later on in her career, she can get it. She can get it. She can possibly get her company to pay for it. A lot of people don't know that, but. If you if you pick the right company, the company will pay for your degree. Yeah. In which case, absolutely get a degree if you're not paying for it. You're it's, not paying for it. You got the time. You might as well. Absolutely. It might might as well. That being said, I mean, if you got to pay for it, then you know maybe then, m- m- maybe not. It's different I, math. I'm gonna be. It's different I'm, math. I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't think that she's ever gonna need one. Mm-mm. I don't think she's ever gonna need one. But if she needs to, you know, I'm sure that she can uh, find somebody to pay for it. Or at a different at a different time, her economic her personal finances will be okay enough for her to handle it because she's making money. That's another thing money. that we don't talk about enough too, or we haven't we haven't really talked about very much. Something we haven't talked about very much is that if you get if you avoid the debt early on and you just focus on earning and you earn enough, you can pay for your degree without going into the debt that makes college such a difficult decision at the beginning. Like if you want to go because you want to get a history degree, that's fine. But maybe you should focus on earning first. And then when you make enough money, you can go when you want to. And you don't have that pressure on you to then get out and monetize that degree. If you want to learn for the sake of learning, then you need to earn first. And then you can learn later when you can actually afford to pay for that. But the idea that uh, a 17 or 18 year old kid has earned the luxury of learning for fun if if they're if they're if they're paying for it is frankly very foolish right right yeah so i think i think both of us 
this is this is our passion. I mean, this is what we when we turn the mics off, this is what we talk about. This is what we talk about. Yeah. We we love to we love to talk about it. Oh. We hope that there's a solution for it. We hope that we can provide some guidance to people and for people in this realm. I think the future is bright for alternative learners. Exactly. For people that choose not to go to college. I think the future is bright. And we're not saying that this is going to be easy. No. It's going to be very, very hard. Mm -hmm. I think... Harder than college. I think in very many ways. Harder than college. But that's what you're signing up for. Mm -hmm. You're not going to go into debt. You're going to make money. Mm -hmm. You're going to figure it out. Without ha- without having to go to college, without being backed into a corner with the debt too, that's really you you, it 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 is well documented that you make better decisions when you are not under duress. The debt is tough, man. The debt is tough. And for a kid, yeah, for a kid, you're 17 years old. You've never even seen forty thousand dollars in person. You can't. You don't know what that looks like. We know. I didn't. There was. I, di- I didn't. I had no idea what I was signing up for. We knew this lady that was a psychiatrist and she, when we knew her, she was in her 50s, 60s years old, years old. And she had debt from college and medical school and whatever else, student debt. That she was still paying off. And the person who was paying that was her husband, who was a self-taught coder. I don't even know how you can have bills that that far, like that late in life. Like, or what that, that do- what that does to you. Like that kind of... You no, should- I just don't know. No, no, no. I'm saying what I don't understand is how operationally, like how does she still have debt? Like how long are these freaking loans? Like what, what, what did they write? Like a million year loan? You know what I mean? I mean, it must be. Right? Like what the hell? Like, how are you... Do- st- doctors have it rough. I'm wondering... Um, so maybe she has to refinance it a couple of times. I, I, w- I wish I'd asked her more. It's kind of a... It's a sense... The reason why I didn't ask her is it's a very sensitive subject. Like... Let me let me ask let me let ask, me ask why about you your still personal have, finances and debt. But I do remember <laughs> that I did ask her one time how much debt. You know what I mean? Like how many figures? And oh, it, oh you really did ask? I did. Her. I, yeah, yeah. I asked her, and um, you know, it was. I don't realize how it was so much, but it was still it was still in the high five figures, and I was just like, how does that? How much did you go into debt, woman? Whoa! Like how much? But the thing is, when she went to school, she went to school. It would have been long time ago. 70s i don't know 70s 80s 70s i'm assuming 70s 80s i don't know i get it math the thing is too back then it was actually a better investment it didn't cost as much is there any last words you want to say no no just uh yeah that's uh that's who we are that's what we're doing that's what we've done that's why we're doing this we 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 really do care about it very deeply um we care about it because we see the impact that it's having on our peers and our younger siblings and uh, to, i mean parents even and and i think that that it's it's a really under addressed it's a really under addressed topic that we're discussing i think a lot of people are afraid to address it because uh the opposition to it is very well credentialed they got a lot of letters yeah but the thing is at the end of the day this is very common sense this is very simple stuff and it's just a it's just very simple stuff like hey you know what maybe you should work first hey you know what maybe you should try this first because it costs less and it doesn't take as much time like the things that we're saying are not academic they're not intellectual they're very simple they're just like hey if you're trying to work maybe just work and see what that see what that's like and we're just trying to equip people with very simple practical tools on how to navigate the unknown space of not going to college or trying to get a job and just not being able to afford 
to buy another degree or to go back. And yeah, we just care about a lot. It's a huge financial burden and it's being put on people who are very young and very uninformed. And that to us just seems like something that people, people just need to know what we're talking about. Well said. I don't think that I have anything else. Um, as always, guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in. If you guys liked it, if you guys learned anything, please leave a review. Please subscribe. Leave us a comment. Let us know how we can do better. Let us know what you want to know about. It's always helpful. We got you. Right on. All right. Until next time, guys. Thank you. Hello. Thanks.